Uh, I'd uh, like to thank the committee very much for letting me briefly insert myself into tonight's program. Uh, Marsh did this for me several decades ago, and I'm, I'm honored to return the favor. So, uh, Marshall Merrifield is this year's distinguished alumnus. Uh, Marsh and I were members of the Kincaid class of 1978. Uh, we were very good friends and uh, remain so today. Uh, Marsh is now a leading citizen of San Diego, and pretty much every year I travel down from Los Angeles for a visit and to go to a Padres game where Marsh is a season ticket holder. And uh, the sports fans among you may know that uh, the Padres recently signed free agent Manny Machado. So uh, Marsh, I just want to sincerely uh, congratulate you uh, not only on this award, but uh, also on the fact that your baseball team now has exactly one good player. <laughs> That's better than zero, we can all agree. So, uh, speaking of baseball, uh, uh, in high school uh, we were both on the team. Marsh was better. Uh, we sang in a barbershop quartet. Marsh was better. You, you see a pattern emerging here. And uh, also, uh, as I'm mentioned in the video we're about to see. Uh, in those days, uh, Marsh was regarded as a good-looking guy. And, uh, and uh, one of my daughters uh, heard that and asked uh, if he was still nice-looking. And I said, I don't know, he's not getting any younger. You know. and, um, and she said, but Dad, uh, you're still cute. And I said, uh, well, honey, you have to understand, I'm only 58. Marsh is almost 60. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not even really the same generation. So, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, after Kincaid, uh, Marsh was a football star at Princeton. He went on to an extremely successful uh, business career. And uh, to this day, driving around San Diego with him, it's, it's remarkable. I'll say, oh, that's a nice school, and Marshall admit that uh, he and his wife Jenny helped found it. Uh, and they, they built playgrounds in underserved areas, they spearheaded homeless initiatives uh, as port commissioner of San Diego. He put lights in the Coronado Bridge. They built fish hatcheries under the bay. It, it, at a certain point, I, I do find myself wondering, you know, how can one man do so much or, or to quote Shakespeare, uh, on what meat doth this our Caesar feed that he has grown so great? I, I wasn't a football star. I was an English major. So <laughs> that's, that's where I'm coming from. And uh, anyway, please enjoy this short video about Marshall and his many accomplishments. I told one of my daughters about this event, and she asked me what you were like in high school, and I said uh, he was kind of a winner. He was a good athlete, good student, nice looking guy, the girls liked him. Marshall Merrifield came to Kincaid in our sophomore year, and he was the new guy on campus. And really, from the minute he stepped foot, everyone got to know Marshall very well. That was just his personality. What do you think, David? That's right, and in college, uh, Marshall went to Princeton, and uh, so his house, his parents lived in Connecticut, and his house became the gathering point for any of us who were in the East Coast. Marshall made a pit stop at St. John's School before he came to Kincaid, but once he came, Marshall, as a student, did extremely well. Whether it was sports, academics, or just being an all-around good guy or being an all-around goofball on stage, Marshall could wear all of those hats and more. Back then, Kincaid's classes were smaller than they are now. And so when Marshall came, he was an instant hit in, in academics, in theater, in sports, and he just soaked up what Kincaid had to offer. Marshall is an all-around exceptional person in his life and in his volunteerism and certainly during his time here at Kincaid on campus. Marshall was a go-to. You could always depend on him and as David mentioned earlier, 
um, after Kincaid went to Princeton, after Princeton was on Wall Street, and the entrepreneurial skills that he gathered there led him to, of all things, buying a Clark Security Company, which I believe had been one of his clients, and he and his brother just built it into an enterprise um, just as basic as they are, but one that was extremely, uh, I think, profitable for them and just a, a remarkable endorsement of Marshall's uh, ability to think on his feet, to garner a team, to put together resources and to leverage it in all the right ways and, and did it with his typical Marshall Merrifield style. Marshall is so successful because he's a servant leader. Uh, he doesn't lead in order to get the credit for himself. He leads by helping others and therefore people want to work with Marshall. We've been friends for 44 years now. It's been a lot of fun, and it's also been an honor. I remember back in our school days, you would talk about someday after you got your career established, uh, you'd really like to do something positive for the country. And I thought a little, uh, what kind of teenager are you? But mostly I admired it, and I thought this guy's got it figured out, and uh, that was true. I, I just think Marshall, as he rises above the rest of the crowd and the rest of us, is certainly someone that is really deserving of this honor. Marshall's been successful in many careers, in business, in charity work, in political campaigns. He's been successful in government service at the Port of San Diego. He and his wife started a wonderful school in San Diego, and he and his wife have raised three wonderful children. Uh, he's been creative, he's been successful. But the reason we honor Marshall is because he did all of those things with integrity. And he brought people together in those projects. So in 2019, when things are so divided, we honor Marshall because of how he unified the people who work with him. He smiles and you smile back. He leads by example and leads with joy. That charisma, that charismatic style that he had, was just a natural extension of just his being. And we were the lucky recipients of that. Uh, as somebody who actually saw you kick what was then the longest field goal in state history, and, and that's Texas, not Delaware, okay? Uh, I can honestly say that in every single football game I've seen since, when someone has attempted a field goal of a similar length, I've thought, Marsh would make it. So congratulations on your award. Well deserved. Love you, buddy. So Marshall, on behalf of the class of 1978, congratulations. congratulations. Well, Marsh, if you're like me, uh, you get tired of people telling you how great you are. So you're going to have so uh, you're going to have to speak for yourself. Please welcome a uh, great husband, father, and friend, the 2019 Distinguished Alumnus, Marshall Merrifield. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's a privilege to be a friend for life uh, with you. Your wit and creativity have inspired so many. Uh, Thank you, Kincaid, and the Alumni Association for this honor. It's truly humbling. Uh, when I got the phone call uh, three months ago, I wondered if the committee had picked the right guy. Uh, I confirmed that they knew I sold doorknobs for a living, you know. Um, uh, but entrepreneuring is a team sport, and uh, you can't start or build any company with by yourself. It's a group activity. Uh, and some of my partners I want to thank real quickly. Uh, my older brother Bruce, who was my first business partner, he taught me a lot while we sold doorknobs together. He's a brilliant strategist and an ethical leader. My current business partner is Will Elting, who's here, and my son Jack. Thank you for your confidence and trust in me. We are building a great business. And to my wife of 30 years, Ginny Russell Merrifield, she is my life partner. And we have the highs and lows of each of these entrepreneurial adventures. Thank you for your love, patience, and support. 
Yes, I did borrow money to purchase a company at age 29, a company that distributed locks and keys and door hardware to locksmiths and builders. Over 20 years, I grew it to be the nation's largest seller of door hardware and sold it to one of America's largest companies a few years ago. So I really did sell doorknobs. Uh, I guess it was quite a few. I guess you could say it was the key to my success. <laughs> but the, the upper class would like that joke too, actually. Um, but I saw before the ceremony John German, our AP history teacher from many, many decades. And John, I want to thank you for inspiring me to think about government. And I want to ask the question right now and talk a little bit about, is government service still a noble calling and worth aspiring to? And I asked the kids today that question. And I say firmly, yes, it is. There are a lot of good people and good things happening at the local and state levels. Washington, D.C. has too much money and too much vitriol to be collaborative right now. But our federalist system, thank you, John Berman, is working in just the ways that the founders of this country imagined. The 50 state governments are pursuing things near to citizens' interests, and there is innovation and good work being done. California and Texas are two examples of state governments that have been very effective, but are pursuing very different strategies. It's been a, quite a privilege for me to be working on cleaning up the harbors and bays, making sure that real estate near the waterfront is done in an environmentally sensitive way while we build jobs. And in Texas, many great things are happening, but they're very different. Uh, and those, those two good examples make sure that you know, this economy continues to grow. We, when I asked the kids earlier today about how making sure that government work was good, that they step up when they get a chance to build and do something good for this nation because it's possible. Uh, and it's been a great privilege for me to be able to do that. This morning I asked the, uh, the privilege after speaking with them to have a small group discussion over lunch. Uh, and I encourage them that they should, like an entrepreneur, experiment cheaply, fail forward, try new things. And I encourage them that no tomorrow is the first day of the rest of your lives and that you can try something new every month from here on out. Forget about yesterday or worrying about being awkward or the latest social media post. With this strategy, I encourage them they will likely find a great passion by the time they graduate and have the confidence to try new things and grow the rest of your lives. They can and will change the world. Here's to Kincaid where great passions begin and experimentation is safe. And it's a wonderful place and it's where it started for people like me and Jeff and all of you. And we should be so grateful for that. Thank you so much for this honor.